Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Thursday, the 11th of February. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And we're going to sing our hymn once again throughout the service, uh, Jesus Calls Us, number 432, and we will sing the first verse now. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. And now we will say the words uh, of the 85th Psalm, uh, verse 7 to 13. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will sing the second and third verses of our hymn. As of old apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turn from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for his dear sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from each idol that would keep us, saying, Christian, love me more. Our Gospel reading is Mark 10, 17-31, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of Christ. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this can be a very shocking gospel for many people. Uh, we live in a very materialistic age. Uh, and there is definitely, uh, Jesus says in another part, you cannot serve God and mammon or money. Uh, and I think that's true. So what does this mean? Does this mean we have to sell everything we have, our houses and everything, and, and give the money to the poor and live in destitution to follow Jesus? I don't think it necessarily means that. One thing about this gospel lesson, this man who comes to Jesus, he's earnestly looking to... Um, to, to follow Jesus, to, to, to follow his, his advice. And Jesus tells him that he has to give up everything he owns and sell it. And then it says that Jesus loved him. And the way that Jesus expresses that love is to tell him how to move forward in his life and to find the kingdom. Uh, certainly material possessions can be a stumbling block for those who are looking for the kingdom. Because we put our faith in many ways, in the material things rather than in God. Now, this does not mean that all money and wealth is bad, but we have to understand what it's for. Um, uh, the past general secretary of our church, uh, uh, Michael Thompson, uh, says that money is a grace storage device. Uh, in money, we can use money to to let God's grace flow by the things that we support. So remember that any wealth or money that you have, there's a reason that you have it. And that is to try and use it to usher in the kingdom of God in this world. Indeed, it's hard to enter the kingdom of God, especially the kingdom of God that is among us, if we're stuck on money. So use what you have in the service of God's kingdom, and you will enter God's kingdom today, here, and now. Let us sing together the fourth verse of our hymn. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than thee. And now let us confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may depart this life in your faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Luke and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we pray for those who are sick, uh, all the sick known to us, the sick in our parish. We pray for those who are sick because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we pray for all who are caring for them. Today, especially, uh, we have a cycle of prayer for the sick. And today, Thursday, we pray for Jane, for Pat and Les Matthews, for Jody Cocker, for Corinne Newell, and for Marion Conlon. We continue to pray for the aged and the most vulnerable uh, to the pandemic. 
We pray for their caregivers, the staff who are dealing with them and assisting them. We pray for those who are in residential settings or in their own homes. And we pray for the rollout of the vaccine that our most vulnerable will be protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and especially we continue to pray in memory of Joan Blackwell and Jason Buckle. We pray for their friends and family and all who mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our refugee family, for Muhammad, Karima, Fatin, and Ahmed. Keep them safe, O oh Lord. Keep them hopeful and help them to know there is a community ready to receive them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households on our parish list. And if you are joining us from another community, I invite you to pray for members of your community. Today, we pray for Peter and Mary Marshall, for Heather Mattox, for Joanna Mauro, for Jackie Maver, for Doug and Sandra May, for Marilyn McBride, for, for Vera McCallum, for Owen McCaughan and Shenghi, and for Leah. We pray for Cheryl and Jessica McDougall, for John, Allison, and Sophie McFarlane. We pray, O Lord, for their health and safety and happiness. We pray also, O Lord, that they might know they belong to a community of faith which cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer today for the Diocese of Ancole in the Church of the Province of Uganda. We pray, O Lord, for their bishop, for all the clergy and people. We pray for all the people who um, live in that area as well, that the church might serve. And we pray for inclusion of all people in that diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we pray for another brother of the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Today, we pray for Brother Luke Deitwig, who was priested uh, within this past year. We give thanks for him. We pray for him and his ministry, his creativity, his insights, and we pray that God's grace might flow through him to the wider world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray our night prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray the collect for this week. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we sing the final verse of our hymn. Jesus calls us by thy mercies, Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to thine obedience, serve and love thee best of all. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. May the Lord of peace give us peace in all ways and at all times. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. I hope that you have a restful night's sleep. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, so we won't have an online evening prayer tomorrow. You might want to use one of the ones uh, that are on the site, one of the older ones, if you want to uh, pray tomorrow evening. Uh, but we continue, of course, from Saturday to Thursday uh, in the week ahead. Blessings.